Hello friends, neighbors, John Yours Neighbor here. Welcome down to the Nook, uh, but we're not gonna stay here. We're gonna go over to a clip that I just took at uh, Wine and Beyond in St. Albert because uh, Dave or uh, Yukon Dave is sampling some of Two Brewers whiskey. You know, uh, Two Brewers is a fantastic Canadian single malt story, if I may. Bob and Alan started uh, their brewery and then got into whiskey and and i've met bob what a fantastic fellow and and they continue to make i suggest some of the best canadian single malt uh, i picked up this bottle because they still had it at wine and beyond this 35 and i'll open it up later and share more thoughts because i know this one's available internationally so more of you guys can actually get a bottle of this tubers single malt but uh if you're in the edmonton or st albert area he's at uh, at the wine and beyond sampling even some of the single casts the innovative casts and I don't know if they're the most awarded craft single malt distiller in Canada, but it feels that way. I know they've taken the top single malt spot at the Canadian Whiskey Awards. Jim Murray Bible recently gave it to them, uh, and they just continue to put out just some excellent, excellent single malt. So tune in or, or come back after the break and I'll be standing and just talking in a, in, a, in a store and sampling some of their whiskey. And then later, you know what, I'm going to open up this bottle and, uh, and share with you guys a bit more tasting and review. Cheers. Three, four. neighbors here again with Dave from uh, True Brewers or Yukon Brewing uh, and today Dave you have of course some beer we can sample but I'm pretty interested in the whiskey you've got laid out so can you kind of talk me through the different whiskeys that we could get here at Wine and Beyond? Yeah I've got a nice little selection here at Wine and Beyond we're showing two different of our classics our straight up single malt whiskey there's no peat there's no port barrels it is a classic so we don't have to hide it by putting other things in it We've got a really interesting, uh, innovative whiskey that's, that's been aged for two years in barrels that held maple syrup. Oh. Of course, I got peated whiskey. This peat, uh, the peated malt comes from Scotland. And the weird thing is that this one is just, it's been packaged and it's going back to Scotland probably next month. Okay. So we bought the grain and we're sending it <laughs> back in liquid. And the really cool one is the Wine and Beyond cask. 252 bottles, 11 year old single malt. The cool thing here is it's 40% malted rye. Oh, really cool. And that's as much as we can handle it. Yeah. For that, then that's really neat. Well, if you balance. don't mind pouring me a sample, why don't we try one up of these and then I'll like to try the single cask here. So which this, is this one, one I can pour for anybody and we sell the most of this. Okay. There you go. Now this is part of the innovative series. So what's, what's making this one innovative versus the classic? Well, a little bit of his, uh, no, a little bit here. So we do sherry barrels, we do port barrels. Those aren't innovative because everybody's doing them. <laughs> One day a guy showed up at the brewery and says, hey, can I borrow your whiskey barrels to put my maple syrup in? So the boss wow. said yes. And then when he took the whiskey, uh, the maple away, we put the whiskey in. So this has sat for two years. So we think that's a little bit innovative. Yeah. Most whiskey that you look on the shelf, if it's a, if it's a maple whiskey, it's mass production maple whiskey. It's got a lot of maple flavor, but it's also just dump in a bunch of maple, stir it up, bottle it. This took two, 27 months, actually. Wow. So, you know, I will say on the nose, yeah, it's sweeter and floral, but I'm not getting too much maple right off on the nose. I better try a little sip and see if it comes out. Oh, there it is, for sure. That's a really nice balance of some of that... Um, Almost a darker maple syrup, like a, like a, like a, what do you call that grade? You're a maple syrup. Yeah. <laughs> but a darker grade of maple syrup in with whiskey. Wow. That's really well balanced. Well, it's really neat because I actually got a bottle of the syrup and I was, you know, hmm. biggest fear was going to be overly sweet, really sticky. And I didn't want that. That's yeah. just not what we do. Right. And when I got, the, when I got the whiskey, I thought, oh, this is really well balanced and, yeah. and we use that all the time. So then I had to go to the maple syrup, tried the maple syrup and I, well, this isn't the same as what I get off the store shelf. Now I understand what flavoring can do. Uh, and this right. is all natural yeah. and yeah, we just don't take shortcuts. Oh, that's a really nice treat. Okay, now could I try the unique to 
So this is their single barrel, right? You single said they barrel. have 240 bottles, something like that? 252 bottles 252, were made. Sorry. It was done for their 10 year anniversary. They got a whole bunch of cool 10 year anniversary stuff. Yeah. So come down, have a look. Uh, Wine and Beyond's got some really cool stuff here. And you said, okay, so this is released stronger at 58%. Uh, and it's got malted rye, you said, which was one yep. of the unique characteristics of that. So if you look at it, the base of all single malt, base of all single malt whiskeys will be pale malt. We're a brewery, we use pale malt. But we also like to have a little bit of fun. So we've got a million kinds of malt laying around. <laughs> and this is malted rye. In Canada, it can't be a malted, uh, an all malt product. If it's, it's gotta be all malted. And, okay. and we can't handle rye that's not malted. Okay. We can't get okay. the sugars out. So everything you see on the shelf over there. Yeah. <laughs> behind us <laughs> uh, is unmalted and it's it's less expensive so if you're doing high volume you want to go less expensive so it's always about the dollars all of us small craft distillers we don't worry about those dollars as much as the big guys right. would yeah for sure so yeah so and, and it could be a bit of an impression usually for me with rye I do I do find a little more slight grassy, a little more spicy notes, but I'm getting a little bit spicier approach on the nose. Now it's also 58%, so it's more expressive, I think, than the Innovative, what was that at? The uh, Innovative 40. was, yeah. So That's the only one we do at 40, yeah. yeah. And we do 58% for a cask, because if we go over 60, the tax goes up. Oh, really? Yeah, 60.01, the oh, tax I, goes up. I had no idea. <laughs> and you guys pay it, we don't, so. Well, anyways, I wish we could share it together, but cheers, we're gonna give it a try. I'm working, actually. <laughs> And then while the camera's on, I'm not drinking. Ah, uh, that is really good, really good. And but there is, a, I will say, a, a lovely spicing. Not a, not a harsh or, or an aggressive, like not a deep, deep hug kind of thing. But there is a nice spicing balance to some of the malt sugars in there. Very nice. Well, and I still have a problem with rye because I don't understand alcohol heat versus rye spice. Right. And yeah. I, I really struggle with that. <laughs> well, and, and I, I drink a fair amount of rye, and for me, the, the heat comes off more of that, you know, we, uh, if it's bourbon, it's a Kentucky hug, if it's not an Alberta hug, you know, that's the burn, versus the spicing on my palate. So that's where I, I usually distinguish between the rye kind of green, not green, but you know, the yeah, spice. Well, I guess it needs more research for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, at any rate, Dave, thank you for, for oh. walking me through. Uh, it's a pleasure. Pouring some samples. Oh, by oh. the way, just this bottle here is number 35, and it's out of stock. They've got some in the store, and we actually sell that in Scotland. That's the first whiskey we sent to Scotland. The, the 35? Yep. Oh. And 38 is going to Scotland as soon as we get labels for number 41, right. which is a slightly peated sherry barrel. Okay. A PX sherry barrel. Well, that's good for you to mention because actually a number of people that tune into the channel, um, I, the, most of my viewers are either in the U.S. or over in the U.K. So oh, cool. they'll be able to, to look for the 35 if it's still there. The 38, when it comes or it's already going? Sorry. It's packaged. Okay. It just needs to have the second one because last year they bought one whiskey. Yeah. This year they want to buy two. Oh. Ah, so, so they just cool. say, yeah, whenever you get around to it. And we, I know the bottles are packaged because I checked this morning. Yeah but they're not labeled, ah. so the labels aren't here yet. Okay, but again, thank you. Thank you for sharing your knowledge here. And if anyone catches this uh, today, uh, you're here till so seven, seven o'clock, and it would be a great opportunity to come in and, and try some of the two brewers, and then I'm sure you'd go home with a bottle. Thanks for joining us. Please. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Thanks.